There we go. Here we are. Back for another edition. Another day. Yes. In it, my dad's condo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Another day. In All right. So we've got condo. we've got um, a midweek, and by midweek, I like it's Monday, but we've got a intro week. We usually do our used car updates on Saturdays. Okay. So we're filming on a Monday. This comes out on a Tuesday. It's a it's a midweek. Midweek. Mid mid midweek. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's sure. Midweek. midweek. We've got our midweek. Good good news, folks. It's almost Wednesday. It's almost hump day. Midweek news car update. <laughs> okay. So you showed me, you found this article on Automotive News talking about the state of the used car market on the wholesale side. Again, yeah. we're focusing on wholesale. Wholesale has implications on retail. You can you can fill us all in on those. But what'd you read? What'd you find out? What tough, do you need to know? Tough time for dealers seeking inventory as wholesale values soar. And it brings out the Ventnor police. Every time I mention the wholesale place, <laughs> somebody's out stealing a car. <laughs> You're funny, man. So wholesale uh, prices are going up. Big time. Big, big, quantify. Quantify big time. Well, it said here, looking here, during the 11-week period that ended on July 5th, Wholesale auction prices rose 24% in those 11 weeks, and they stand 8% higher than at the beginning of March, according to J.D. Power. So don't blame me. Blame J.D. Power for this one. <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm just reading the damn article. Yeah. So they so wholesale prices have have shot up in the last almost three months. Dramatically, a quarter. Uh, well, yeah, twenty five percent. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 pretty much a quarter. Yeah. And that's today's video on wholesale prices. So we're done. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think of that, folks? Under four minutes. No, no, but no. there are some serious implications there because, and and we'll link to this automotive news article. You need a subscription for it, but if you're really inter interested in this stuff, you can sign up for it. Maybe. Yes. Um, they have some interesting insights as well about profit and margin. Yes. Yes, they do. I was, um, was queuing you up. Yeah, you were. I just have to find it here, damn it. Oh, uh, Asbury Automotive Group. Which Asbury's up in New York State, I think? I don't think so. They're a, they're a national. Oh, they're national. Okay. They're, they're a national uh, publicly traded auto group. And um, they reported last week that their used car volume in June um, for all their stores rose 1.5% over the june in the previous year so that's not month over month that's year over year for the month of june. june and the gross profit per used vehicle soared 27 percent. 27 from june of last year to june of this year. yes that is insane unreal yes yes and the reason that theirs soared is because they Unlike a lot of dealerships, uh, they didn't try and sell their used car inventory when wholesale prices were low. They held on to it. And being a large publicly traded company, they could afford to do that. And so they were selling the cars at the new higher uh, retail prices due to the increase in the wholesale values that had occurred. But they were selling inventory that was... Their cost basis was, was lower because Much they were, lower. Yeah. And much, and, much lower. And there had been an automotive news article, and I'm interested to get your take on this yes. if you remember from back during the Great Recession. You know, I remember was, the Great Recession. That's how we ended up on the East Coast, man. <laughs> I knew there was something that led to that, yes. <laughs> um, but you were working at that Acura dealership yes. in Scottsdale. And yes. I remember reading an automotive news article that talked about when the pandemic was just starting, there was all this uncertainty. Should we double down and buy more cars or should we be selling everything? And I, at that time, was thinking of trying to trade in, right when the pandemic started, my Volvo S90. Yes. And I got a, a quote from the local Volvo dealership. And then I went back, it was like on Tuesday. And then on Friday, I went back to actually sell my car to them. He's like, yeah, we can't buy any cars. Uh, management said we can't do it. And so I bring this up because there were definitely dealership groups like Asbury that were saying, no, 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 buy, buy, buy. And saw this kind of rebound happening. Sold, made it. Well, they money. they might not have been buying. They just weren't selling. Weren't selling. Yeah. But I think the it seems like if it seems yeah. it's I, I I do know of dealerships that were buying and were buying as many cars as they could afford, as many cars as their lenders 
would allow them to buy. And that's what brings me back to 08, 09, was what was going on in the dealership then? Because I feel like you've told stories about you couldn't get rid of inventory. I mean, you no, we were, we anything. were, we were, you know, we when when I left the dealership, um, we were averaging selling fifty new cars a month, down from a high of one hundred and four. This was oh eight or oh nine. This was in oh eight. Yeah, um, and and shortly, and and I I was relieved of my position in June. Yeah, um, and. In August, they had sold 18 new cars for the month. So, you know, they were only down 80-some percent. So, so it's not like they were buying inventory. They weren't buying it. They couldn't get rid of the inventory they had. Which brings up the point of, like, the manufacturer still sends vehicles to the dealership. Yeah, you I'm, guys yeah, fight it to the nail. But. Oh, at that point, I'm, you know, they were turning down inventory. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it it's just interesting to see that some dealer groups were proactive yes and that's what led to stupid crazy margin i i do know that uh, our dear friend glenn yes uh, that works at a mercedes-benz dealership um they were during the height of the pandemic they were buying cars they were buying as many cars as they could because they saw an opportunity to buy cheap and be able to sell at, at a higher adjusted retail price, increasing their profit margins, and well, now they're running out of cars, and they can't replace them because they can't buy them cheap, and yeah. that's the big problem because, you know, there's there's basically two ways that dealers really get their cars, and that is they trade them um, from the customer. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and uh, they buy them off the street from people who just want to sell their cars. Well, in auctions. No, not not an auction yet. I mean, okay. you know, sometimes customers just you know come in and hey, no, I'd okay, like gotcha. I'd like you know, so those have pretty much dried up. Yeah. And and then now the auction prices are crazy, and and they're not getting as many off lease cars as they normally would have, and the rental car companies so far haven't dumped as many rental cars as what was expected. So. There, there's actually a little bit of a shortage of cars going to the auctions, which is what's putting pressure on the wholesale prices going up. Now, here's something uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, Cox estimated that the total used vehicle volume, wholesale and retail, dropped 12% year over year in June. Okay. And that that drop is in part was related to the tighter inventory levels. Cox also estimated that the retail supply of used vehicles peaked at 115 days on April 8th. So this is what dealers had in inventory and tumbled to just 31 days by the end of June when the normal day supply that dealers try to have is 44. So I'll link to the video that, that me and my dad did on market day supply. And just think about that for a moment. If yes. you were operating that dealership, and if you had 115 days worth of supply, how you would approach negotiating on a car deal versus if you had yeah. 31 days of yes. supply, how and, you would negotiate a car deal. And and the upward pressure on the wholesale value of cars at auction to replace what you have on the lot um, might make what you have on your lot now more valuable. And uh, you're not willing to negotiate quite as much, which is, uh, well, not the news that the audience wants to hear, but it's the news. Yeah. And then I, I mean, I'll mention something that I saw recently was Carvana um, just completed some sort of partnership with Mannheim, where they now have more direct access to be selling their car, cars at auction. Um, so I think there's just a lot of moving pieces in the auction world trying to get uh, wholesale, you know, uh, used inventory mm -hmm. to the right place at the right time, and no one really foresaw what's happened, and that's led to this huge price increase. Probably has something to do with the fact that nobody has lived through a pandemic before. Yeah. When it comes to the car business, so this this is all new for everybody, but but just just be aware that wholesale prices have shot up almost twenty five percent in the last eleven weeks. Um, which, if you're trading a car, should be good for you. I'm, st I'm really tempted. Yeah, if you're buying a car and it's a pre-owned car, and because there's there's um, 
less new car inventory available because the, the uh, factories had been shut down. Um, so more and more people are looking to buy used cars than new cars at the moment. Um, it means with a shortage of used cars you're, and, and, and the pressure on the wholesale pricing, you're going to end up paying more at the moment than you should. And now the expectation is that this will continue um, through maybe the end of summer and then we should see some relief wholesale pricing wise um, going down. Uh, going into fall and winter, and they expect it to build up again um, to record highs next spring. Yeah, and if you're interested in the market day supply information, um, again, I know I've mentioned it in some other videos, that's what I'm working on with my dad is building this little app that'll essentially tell you, okay, you're interested in this Toyota Tacoma, here's how long it's been on the dealer's lot, you know, here's what the market day supply is in your area. Here's how it's trended over time. Because what we're realizing from doing all these videos is that if you have that information, you can be a bit savvier in when you start to have the conversation and try to negotiate the car deal. Um, and just trying to get that information into people's hands in a way that's a lot easier. And we read all the comments. I know we did the market day supply video and people are saying, well, do this car, that car, this car. We'll hit, we'll hit them over time. Yeah. But what we're really working on when we hit stop record um, is going back to working on that application so that it's just in your hands rather than having well, it depend well, on us. That's what Zach's working on. You're going to go uh, take a nap. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to work on my nap. <laughs> okay. Because we were just out on the balcony and it's beautiful out there. And there's a, a, a lovely uh, zero gravity chair well, that, that has my ass in print on it. And, <laughs> and, and my earbuds will be going in and I'll be listening to some nice music as I close my eyes and, and, and work on my my tan and uh, i guess a final note would be if you have a song recommendation for my dad i would love to see that in the comments i'm uh, i'm into jazz i'm into blues i'm into all kinds of things you listen so, to my my stuff from time to time i'm, I'm into some rap yeah but also like alternative music alternative music yeah. uh, stuff that isn't even music yeah i'm 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 giving everything a try i'm you know at 69 i'm i'm, I'm opening my mind to new things or something like that. All right. Thanks, Dad. Uh, it was my pleasure, Zach. Looking forward to, well, tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.